Hey, welcome everybody. Um, this is this is my CD release show. My first show ever in Cincinnati was last August here, so this is kind of cool, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I think I was there, but I remember. You were there, I remember talking to you afterwards. I don't remember that at all. Um, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play my album all the way through, uh, somewhat. Um, unfortunately, the rest of my band couldn't come with me, because they're gay. Don't tell them I said that. Alright, I'm here. But no, they had stuff to do and it stinks, but what are you gonna do? Um, You're gonna rock out. Someone just texted me, hold on, before I start. Cool. Give them the address. So the, um, so this is a concept album, and it's a very strict concept, and the album takes place from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., and I wrote a short story, so I'm gonna read that for everybody, if everybody wants to listen. And then I'm gonna play the album moderately all the way through. Enough of that, son. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna be here till 6 a.m. Everybody, get ready. I'm ready. Check, check, check. I'm a Check. Okay. I've never done. I've never done a reading of everything I've written, so it's kind of weird. And I can't see. What? Why should I play with something a little bit of I'm not gay, Andrew. <laughs> what happened this morning, debate? Okay, everyone, I'm going to read now. For serious. So this will help. Keep this in mind when you're listening to, uh, to me as they play. Okay. Should I, should I read the times and then go? Yeah. Okay, 8 p.m. He was awakened by the gut-wrenching sound of metal vibrating on wood. He grabbed at his phone, opening it to read the text message from his girlfriend. Are you coming to the party? It starts in an hour. You can just meet me there. A knot began to grow in his stomach. He rose from his bed, fully dressed, realizing that he had been asleep for two hours. A smile came over his face as he read the next text. Oh yeah, love you. 9.15 p.m. I love you most of all, my favorite vegetable. It's a Beach Boy song. <laughs> he turned down the stereo as he pulled up to this week's appointed party house. He laughed at the ridiculousness of the stereotypical college routine. Get good grades to please your parents so they won't ask what you do on the weekends. He glanced at his phone. 9.15, he was a little late. He walked in through the garage where a raucous game of beer pong was being played. Each team was composed of one girl taking shots of whatever hard liquor she pleased, due to the idea that getting drunk on beer was trashy. And one guy only focused on getting the girl drunk. The fact stated above made this task all the easier. How anyone could actually compete in this state of mind had always amused him. He walked into the house, fighting to get through the kitchen past the keg manned by two able-bodied bros in matching khaki shorts and backwards hats. A smirk grew over his face at this observation. He scanned the crowd looking for his girlfriend with little luck. He walked into the front room of the house and finally spotted her in the corner. He stood in the living room staring over the crowd at her interaction with a guy he had seen once before. Her laugh was contagious. She took another sip from the beer in her left hand and whispered something in his ear. He could tell that the guy did not understand. She said it again louder. This time the words floated over the crowd and pierced his ears. Oh, him? <laughs> That's nothing serious. 9.45 p.m. His heart pounded as he reached for the car door. The blackness of the night surrounded his body. The lights of the road were like tiny fireflies shooting past his window. She was just joking. He barely heard above the blaring conclusions in his head, a soft voice telling him everything would be all right. 12 a.m. You said you would always love me. Can nothing more be done? He reluctantly picked up his phone and pressed the second speed dial as his thumb stumbled over the send button. Hello? The phone leapt out of his hand. His legs could no longer hold him. He let out a whimper as, he as his knees hit the floor. His chest beat faster and faster and it seemed as if the lights began to grow darker and darker. He grabbed at his keys, slamming the door behind him. Side note, that song explains everything that happened. In short, she cheated on him. 1 a.m. His car lights shone on the entrance of their favorite park. He looked out his sunroof and noticed how bright the stars were. He stared at his door handle for several minutes. Why am I here? He stepped out of the car and made his way to the center of the park, kneeling against a great oak tree. The crickets and tree fogs, frogs are deep in conversation. An owl soon joined in, creating polyphony of sound. The stars overhead seemed to be conducting this orchestra. He could hear a nightingale in the distance. The symphony of the insects overtook every thought. 
1.15 a.m. He looked up and saw something moving in the distance. It seemed to be dancing in the moonlight. He could make out a silhouette of a girl dancing, her long hair engulfing her entire body. It looked as if she grew taller and taller every second, sprouting new limbs as he moved closer. He even hoped that it would be her, calling him from across the park. His teeth clenched at this thought. Every part of his body ached. He had never felt this alone. His eyes began to adjust, realizing it was nothing more than a tree. 3 a.m. Was it my fault? His eyelids clashed against the bottom of his eyes. His head slowly fell to his chest as he repeated her name in his head. He drifted into a soft sleep, dreaming of a song he had never heard before. He could hear a voice yelling in the distance. It sounded as if it was his own, but he couldn't make out what it was saying. The music began to grow louder and louder, and the voice became more distinguished. Suddenly, colors were shooting all around him. It seemed as if every color he'd ever seen was flashing past him in mere seconds. The music faded away, leaving a single light pressing against his left eye. Sunrise. His eyes shot open just as the sun rose above the trees. He crawled out from under the cover of the leaves and felt the full power of the sun.